That's 10-year-old Takaya Blaney. She's quickly becoming an internet sensation. And it's not just because of her singing talents. For the past two years, she's been raising her voice alongside Aboriginal leaders to put the brakes on a proposed pipeline that would bring oil tankers to BC's coast. The Northern Gateway project involves building two pipelines between the Edmonton area and Kitimat, British Columbia. One pipeline will funnel crude oil more than 1,000 kilometres. The other will carry another lighter type of oil called condensate from B.C. to Alberta. The $5.5 billion project also includes a new marine terminal in Kitimat where oil tankers will come to load and unload their cargo. It's that risk of an oil spill that most worries to Kaya Blaney. Here's the CBC's Duncan McHugh with the story of the power of a little girl versus big oil. As long as she's got room to play, you can move uh, Lee a little closer if you like. This crew is filming a show about indigenous environmentalism, and this 10 year old is TV gold. And here we go. Hello, I'm Lee. Hi, I'm Takaya. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Why the fuss over Takaya Blaney? Well, listen to the message of her song. Tankers and pipelines keep coming through. For her, this all started two years ago with a school project about oh. otters. I learned the main cause of death to an otter is hypothermia, which is caused by oil spills. Then there's this ad in the newspaper about this new proposal by the Ambridge Corporation to put in a pipeline, and I wanted to do something about that. Here's what upset her. A pipeline isn't measured in miles. The Northern Gateway Pipeline, a proposal by Enbridge to transport crude oil from Alberta to tankers on BC's coast. It's a big company eyeing a huge Asian market, and little Takaya was worried about otters. With her music teacher, she wrote a song that imagines a coastal oil disaster. Now it's just oil up to our knees. Bring back the days we used to care. With her parents' help, she filmed this video and uploaded it to YouTube. And it went viral, racking up tens of thousands of views. If we do nothing, it'll all be gone. Her parents, Del and Anne, took it in stride. We've been telling Takaya from the time that she could, you know, absorb the information that, uh, you know, our, our ancestors' land and our blood are together. We're, we're one and, uh, you know, it's very important that we take care of it. I live in North Vancouver, BC, and I'm from the Slime Nation. Greenpeace took notice and encouraged her to take her message directly to Enbridge offices. When she showed up to hand deliver a letter expressing her concerns, to her surprise, security barred her from entering. Did it hurt? Sort of, but I've been able to do a lot of things since then, so. Thing of the past. <laughs> Indeed, Takaya is now a hot commodity. When chiefs representing over a hundred First Nations gathered to oppose the pipeline, Takaya was the guest speaker and a wee bit nervous. And your grandfather will see this and your chin jump. Sore like a hawk. <laughs> right? She waited over an hour, then climbed upon a chair. We will stop these proposals. We, am, we are doing everything we can. We stand united to put an end to this pipe dream. <laughs> She's an ancient soul and a young body. Her song and the words that she brings are very, very strong. They have to look at Takaya and what she has to say because it's her future that she's fighting for. She's been a fighter since birth. Small holes in her heart demanded open heart surgery at the tender age of three months. Her parents weren't sure she'd make it. We slept right there at the hospital. We slept in the van under. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we uh, we never left her side. Yeah. And one of us was always there. So here's Takaya Blaney. But she pulled uh, through and welcome. began displaying a talent for music, both violin and singing. And what's the next one? Overcast. Oh, Hayden. Good.
These days, Takaya is homeschooled by her mom, a teacher by trade who's unable to work as she recovers from treatment for brain tumors. Takaya would sing and play her violin for her mom in, in the um, in Anne's room. And uh, all the nurses, all the patients would come and listen to her and sing. And Yeah, this is where I do my work. This is Takaya's classroom, surrounded by her fish and her turtles. She's a red-eared slider and they... A red-eared slider. Yeah, they're really small when they're first born. They're like, like oh, attached. Uh, uh, hey, uh, yeah. Okay. He does that. <laughs> you got her? Yeah. Okay. Her music teacher, who co-writes Takaya's songs, is amazed by her young protege. Yawning. Worked with David Suzuki, and you know she's doing stuff for the UN. Like, who do who does that in the span of six months? Yes, she just got back from Indonesia, where she wowed a United Nations environmental conference. She seems tireless, a fixture at anti-oil rallies. Have we given a place? Tell me why. Or protests like Occupy Vancouver. Takaya doesn't charge a fee to perform, but as you can see at this canoe festival, people are eager to help. With donations to pay her way. Soon she's heading on a cross country speaking tour, courtesy of We Canada. People keep polluting and polluting this earth because they want to make more money. She aims to speak at the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro next year. Not cheap, so the family hopes to record a fundraising CD. It's quite expensive to record. And I feel, you know, like Anne is, uh, you know, like she never tells me what she's doing, right? Um, as far as recording and stuff, because she knows, probably knows that it's, it would be a shock. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, when I listen to the songs and I think, you know, it had to be recorded. In the meantime, Takaya takes her message wherever she can and waits for an environmental review of the pipeline proposal. What's your goal with the pipeline? Um, my goal is that to stop it. Big words for a little girl. Just wait till she turns 11. Duncan McHugh, CBC News, Vancouver.